For years, the Tony Hawk franchise dominated the skateboarding corner of gaming. Sure, there have been a handful of games that fed off the Tony Hawk hype train, but they unabashedly derived their design from that series. Games like Grind Session, MTV Sports Skateboarding, ESPN X Games Skateboarding, Disney Sports Skating, Evolution Skateboarding, and a Metal Gear Solid 2 skateboarding minigame that was basically the same game. The Simpsons Skateboarding, Go Go Hyper Grind, and Disney's Extreme Skate Adventure. Not an especially exceptional group of games, and after eight consecutive years of Tony Hawk, sales were down and the fatigue had set in. But suddenly, out of the ether, EA publishes a game simply titled Skate. This was during what could be considered EA's self-imposed and short-lived renaissance, publishing more risky ventures like Dead Space, Mirror's Edge, and Army of Two. Now unfortunately, Skate didn't have the selling power to even outperform Tony Hawk's Proving Ground, the one in the franchise I imagine most don't even know exist. But for some reason, EA saw fit to create a sequel for it, and here we are. Skate 2. It's the one I own, alright. The Skate series is, if I may be so bold to assert, a direct response to the stagnation that occurred in the skateboarding genre up until its conception. Now in reality, I'm not sure that Skate and Tony Hawk are actually mechanically dissimilar on the surface. You attempt to do tricks in unbroken succession to get more points in your combo meter and that's it. The objective structures are designed to test what you've learned so far, but otherwise the main engagement of the game is skating lines. What really separates Skate from Tony Hawk is kinesthetics, which I feel truly define the experiences of each game. Tony Hawk's kinesthetics are pretty par for the course for gaming, taking heavy influence from the arcades. Most obviously, physics are played with very liberally. You accelerate like an RC car without even having to move your feet, you get an air off a half pipe regardless of any serious momentum, you magnetize to rails when grinding on them, and this combination of moves is practical and goes on uninterrupted. Things don't feel floaty by any means. Ollies and grinding are snappy, accelerating towards the ground is natural, and you spin at just the right speed. But any semblance of realism is abandoned in order to service the arcade playstyle of over-the-top speed, height, and combo density. The use of the four symbol buttons as the main inputs means you can execute on this high volume of moves in a small span of time, but also mutes the feel of any individual trick. What is a kickflip in a flurry of a hundred other moves that are barely distinguishable from each other? And even outside of the context of a large combo, a kickflip only feels serviceable. Flips are completely independent of you pushing off the ground, and your feet do the bare minimum of kicking the board in whichever way the trick calls for. Tony Hawk makes up for its more utilitarian animation of physics with loud, satisfying sound effects, which help create a sense of impact to the lines you pull off. In contrast, Skate 2 is way more grounded in its attempts to recreate the sensations of skateboarding as they truly are. Thanks to the implementation of a modern physics system, a tangible weight is added to the player character and their movements that no other skating game has ever achieved. You require momentum to do anything other than a flip trick, no exception. You aren't grinding unless you attain a certain speed, and enjoying a half pipe takes effort. Any move you want to do requires a high level of commitment and understanding of how your body will move to pull it off. What helps facilitate this weightiness the player feels is the unique inputs of the game. The right analog stick works as a proxy for the legs and feet, requiring you to pull back, flick forward, or generally futz around with the stick to ollie, do flip tricks, or adjust your feet during a grind or lip trick. The left and right triggers are analogous to left and right arms respectively, determining the grabs you do. This input layout's uniqueness pays off in that it promotes this sense of oneness with the player character. They sort of mimic what the character is doing, in turn giving the sensation that you are hunching down for this heel flip, or grabbing with your left arm to pull off that Christ air. Added on top of all this is superb animation and sound effects, which as you can imagine, keep with the overall naturalism. Lastly, a small detail that Mike overlooked, but subtly enhances the experience, is the default camera angle. 
Now Tony Hawk's camera keeps the player character in the dead center of the frame at a bit of a distance. It is useful in order to get as much visual information when pulling off a big combo, but it isn't exactly dynamic or particularly interested in displaying any moves you do. In contrast, Skate 2 emulates the style of the low angle that is employed by a lot of skate videos, sans the fisheye mercifully. The board and the feet are made the locus of interest, and every animation is put on full display to further accentuate their impact. The cumulative kinesthetics of Skate 2 are a revelation to behold, and they're truly the main attraction of the game. You really get a sense of what it would feel like to actually skateboard and make a skate video. Everything else in the game is in service to engendering that feeling. Now, the plot is thrown together and only serves to contextualize the gameplay. I mean, this intro cutscene is way too Thug 2 for its own good, and just clashes with the rest of the game. However, at the core of the game is a ludological narrative reinforcing your eventual embodiment of a true skater. Logically, a great skateboarder knows a plethora of tricks and can perform them consistently and in succession. When you start the game, you couldn't be farther from this person. You blindly fling around the right analog stick, you only know two grabs, grab with right hand, grab with the left hand, and half pipes are unclimbable mountains. To become the true skater you've always wanted to be, you have two motivators. The frustration with how shitty you are, and the mission objectives that force you to learn moves or attain certain point thresholds via owning a spot or compete against the AI in point-based tournaments. It becomes a circular system where you learn something, then use it to get more points, but then eventually you can't get enough points, so you learn something new to get more points, etc, etc. It's a cycle that is successful at forging you into the skateboarder you want to feel like, even if it relies a bit much on you looking at the trick list and possibly leaving you in the dark because you can do whatever missions whenever and you never learned how to do a laser flip. To be honest, I'm not a master of the game whatsoever. I find myself constantly restarting missions and bashing my head through the brick wall of certain challenges, so I've sort of stopped trying at this point. But I do go back from time to time, put on some of my own tunes, and just skate. Tony Hawk works best as a highly structured set of challenges. Skate 2 works best when you take the pace of those challenges into your own hands and find time to be and feel good being in the game world. It may be a superfluous enjoyment, but it's an enjoyment I cherish when I get the chance.